a warm welcome to all the panelists and participants uh, this afternoon. And to set the scene really quickly uh, in general, uh, the trade relationship between the EU and the US is the world's largest uh, trade relationship worth over 1 trillion euros per year. So together we account for about a third of the world's trade and standards. And these numbers mean something. They underline the potential impact we can have when we work together and not just on our own territories, but when, when done well, we can really leverage our impact also beyond the EU and the US. And we make natural allies thanks to our historic ties and shared values of human dignity, individual rights and democratic principles. And additionally, we are facing the same global challenges such as the current pandemic, climate change and the digital transition of our societies. And finally, we increasingly face the challenges of rival systems of digital governments. And this context makes collaboration not just evident, but also really urgent. And the pandemic has brought us to a window of opportunity for renewed collaboration in the digital sphere. Organizations have been forced to digitalize at speed and the digital transformation will be given a significant boost on both sides of the Atlantic due to the COVID recovery plans. And I believe it is an excellent time now, as Pilar also mentioned, to discuss the EU-US tech agenda. And I look forward to hearing from our panelists what their priorities are and what the tech governance framework should look like. And I have a few preliminary ideas that I would like to share, and I would be curious to hear your views on these. So first of all, the global data flows. Data has become the lifeline of many companies across sectors of the economy. Over 60% of the global GDP is digital, but this also extends to physical sectors such as agriculture and manufacturing. And after the recent Schrems judgments, we need to put all our efforts to finding a sustainable and durable solution that without compromising the privacy of our citizens, obviously, uh, offers businesses the legal certainty that they need to continue their business. Secondly, standardization and interoperability. New technologies come with new challenges, and we need to ensure that these respect our values and that products are interoperable. After all, the digital market is a global market, and I welcome the proposal for a transatlantic AI agreement in this respect. But I believe that the col collaboration on standards should go further than just AI. Together, we can drive and stir discussions in international and multilateral forum when it comes to these. Then on the tech governance, I welcome the idea of the Trade and Tech Council to institutionalize the dialogue of both blocks. We have discussed this many times in INTA already. Um, and I have, for example, a great interest in competition and platform regulations, which Pilar also mentioned. The DSA and the DMA are pieces of legislation that are likely to have an impact overseas as well. And vice versa, US Congress is looking into issues too. And it would, it would be really a missed opportunity to implement measures without any dialogue. And lastly, the WTO, our digital transition can only succeed if we keep a global perspective. And as I mentioned, we need cooperation with our strategic partners, the US, but we also have to look at setting the rules at the multilateral level. And when we look at the WTO, it should not only become ready for the green, but also the digital transition. And the recent trade policy review is calling for the conclusion of an ambitious and comprehensive WTO agreement on digital trade, including on data flows. And we indeed must play a central role in creating these rules for digital trade, but we should also encourage with like-minded partners in order to be able to show leadership on an international stage when negotiating these rules and making sure that the WTO is fit for the digital age and that it suits our interests and values. So having said that, I will keep it at that. And I'm really looking forward to what the panelists have to say. So thank you very much.